Welcome to the city of Milwaukee. What comes to your mind when Milwaukee is brought up in this conversation? Is it that the city is the 35th biggest market in the country? Or you might think of us as the Bruce City. With Milwaukee's population sitting at around 595,000 people, the city has its ups and downs like every other. The city is trying to make Milwaukee one of the best tourist locations in the country, considering we had our largest construction boom since the 1960s. Over the past 20 years, the city has added some major landmarks, the Milwaukee Riverwalk, the Wisconsin Center, Miller Park, and the streetcar system are a few of the more popular additions. The city has also expanded the Art Museum, the Market Repertory Theater, Pure Wisconsin, plus renovation to the Panther Arena. So it's not like Milwaukee is lacking cultural attraction. We also have Summerfest, which is the largest music festival in the world. So if you're unfamiliar with the city, you're probably wondering, what are the cons of living in Milwaukee? Well, almost every landmark that Milwaukee has is downtown or on the east side near the lake. The rest of the city is impoverished for the most part. Milwaukee has come to be the most segregated city in the United States. On top of that, the crime rate has been insane over the past few years. What is the cause of all this outrage? Come and get an understanding of the sad truth of Milwaukee. To the iconic city of Milwaukee. Over the decades, the city has made countless transitions and transformations. Some are for the good and some are for the bad. We have always been known for growing the best beer in the world, plus some of the best bars. You might remember the legendary Milwaukee Bucks team from the 1970s that had the city rocking at the time, featuring an all-time points leader in, in the NBA, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And you cannot forget about the good Milwaukee Brewers teams. After those glory days in Milwaukee, sports kind of went on a decline. Several years of minimum success, but those days are behind us. You now know us for having the Greek freak and Christian Yelich, who are both MVPs. Milwaukee sports are back and maybe better than ever. We cannot talk about the city of Milwaukee without talking about the great art museum that stands out more than anything. People from all over the country come out and visit the art museum all of the time, and that proves why it's one of our biggest landmarks. With all of the good things going on in the city of Milwaukee, we cannot act like everything is going good because that's definitely not the case. Milwaukee has emerged as the most segregated city in the country. Why is that? Why is the city suffering from such high poverty rates? What are the causes of all of these riots? This is our reality. As you can see from the small segment, the city of Milwaukee definitely has its bright spots, but that still does not make up for the negatives. Segregation in Milwaukee has been an ongoing storm for many decades. It's not like this city became the most segregated city overnight. It's been a boiling hot pot that has boiled over making us the most segregated city, which is sad. Just a few years ago, there was the Sherman Park riot that happened because a cop shot and killed a young black man. Businesses was burned down and the story went worldwide. Riots were never good but it's about how the community can overcome the situation. Similar to the Milwaukee riot that happened in 1967. It was around the civil rights movement era and the riot was a huge difference maker at the time. Let's turn to the person who witnessed the 1967 Milwaukee riot. I'll never forget that night, July 30th, 1967. I was watching TV with my mother when we saw that people were burning, rioting, and looting Third Street. 
soon after the National Guards were brought in to control the violence. From July 30th to August 3rd, 3rd Street looked like a war zone. Seven people were killed and dozens were arrested. Neighborhoods and businesses were destroyed. It took many years to restore 3rd Street to the way it looks today. Not unlike 3rd Street, incidents of 1967, many inner cities were plagued with similar problems. Poverty, a lack of education, and opportunities. How ironic today, 3rd Street is called Martin Luther King Drive. She also went on to say the riot limited a lot of resources in the community at the same time. As you can see, a series of problems not being solved can boil over in a vicious uproar. In the 2000, 2018, the Milwaukee property rate sat at 18%, seven points higher than the statewide. According to the new supplemental report from the University of Wisconsin, the property rate statewide currently sits at around 11%. But in Milwaukee County, rates reach up to 18% according to the Wisconsin property report. Dating to about four years back, here are some statistics on Milwaukee's poverty rates. So the overall poverty is at about 18%. Milwaukee's northeast side had a poverty rate of 14%. Overall, in the black communities, poverty rate doubled the overall, overall rate. The overall black poverty rate in Milwaukee sits at 30% and white sits at 10%. On the north, the white poverty rate sits at 12%. Let's take a visual look into northeast Milwaukee. Around here is Galena Street, also known as Little Asia, because a lot of Asians live in this area. On some of these streets, you will see teddy bears with notes because a loved one got killed. Unfortunately, there's a lot of violence in this area. A lot of kids attend Bethune Academy, which is the old 37th Street School, which is an abandoned building blocks away from this one. West Milwaukee has an overall property rate of 9%, but the black community sits at 33%. On the other hand, the white community is almost five times as low as about 7%. The west side of Milwaukee is mainly known for Miller Park and is the main tailgate spot. Let's take a look. Welcome to the west side of Milwaukee, also known as Bruce City or West Allis. This side of the town is almost solely known for the Milwaukee Brewers. Throughout the baseball season, thousands of people come out and tailgate every game, no matter what the weather is like. The west side of town is at the bottom of terms of the crime rates and poverty. On the south, the overall poverty rate is 10%. There are mostly Hispanics that live on the south side of Milwaukee, so you will see a lot of Hispanic culture on that side of town. For the black community, the rate is more than double the overall rate and at 28%, while the white community is at about the same as the overall rate, rounding out up to the 11%. Let's dive in, let's dive in more and see what occurs on the Milwaukee side, the south side of Milwaukee. Hispanic culture. 
There are dozens of taco trucks and Hispanic heritage located all over the south side. In the summer, at Jackson Park, you will see a lot of Hispanics gathered around the park to celebrate holidays like the 4th of July. It contains tons of fireworks and more activities of their culture. However, there are spots on the south where it gets tough. A lot of gang activity are taking lives rapidly, so how in the community can put a halt to that? It's great to see cultures come together and represent where they have come from. If the community can keep the crime rate to a minimum, it would really shed more light on Milwaukee's diversity. Part of the east side and downtown Milwaukee are the most popular spots for tours. Let's take a look at some important locations. As you have learned, Milwaukee has made many changes over the past decades. It is an ongoing battle of ups and downs to make the city a better place. Here are some visuals that explain the city in a nutshell.
to some of the city of Milwaukee, it's not all good and it's not all bad. As you can see, the city has plenty of potential to go in the right direction, but it's all for nothing if the segregation remains active. What would you do to make our community a better place? It starts with you, it starts with us. Let's make a change. Thank you.